Hello, everyone. Thanks so much for joining and welcome to the St. Ignatius Preparatory School Virtual College Fair hosted via StriveScan. Thanks so much for joining us. We have a great lineup for you today. A few housekeeping items before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type questions to our presenters at any time. We do ask that you indicate, um, if you're asking to a, a specific school, we ask that you indicate that school in your question. So it helps our presenters answer those for you a little bit better and quicker. Uh, your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many sessions happening, so be sure to sign up for more. And this presentation is being recorded and will be available within about, within about a week at strivescan.com backslash Ignatius. I'd now like to turn it over to our wonderful presenters, starting with University of Colorado Boulder. Take it away. Awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, my name is Heather Moser, and I am an assistant director of admission at CU Boulder. Super excited to uh, be with you all this evening. I am also the Chicagoland Regional, so I am based regionally in the Midwest. Um, but with that said, let's talk a little bit about CU Boulder. So we are located in Boulder, Colorado, right at the base of the Rocky Mountains. We're about 30 minutes from Denver and then about 45 minutes from the Denver International Airport. We are a large state institution with about 34,500 students enrolled. About 30,000 of those, however, are going to be undergraduate students. We are considered to be the number one college town in America, which really means that there's a lot for you to do around the Boulder area, like Pearl Street Mall, for restaurants and shops, hiking, and then even skiing less than 30 minutes away. We have an 18 to one student to faculty ratio, which gives you an opportunity to get to know your faculty during office hours or after class. Additionally, 85% of our classes have fewer than 50 students, and then 50% of our classes are 25 students or less. So there's a lot of opportunity for you to get to know your peers and enjoy your academic experience as a student. We certainly welcome innovation and really support this culture by uh, encouraging our students to get involved with programs like research. You'll have plenty of opportunities to do this, whether it be in a lab or uh, in some sort of experience um, you know, outside of the university. But in addition to that, um, we always like to mention our undergraduate research opportunities program, which offers funding for students to do research. So you'll have um, potentially funded research opportunities. I mentioned that uh, we are considered to be the number one college town in the US, but in, in addition to that, we're also considered to be the happiest and the healthiest. So I really feel like part of that is just our 100 days of sunshine a year and cool atmosphere that you would be joining, but it's certainly not uncommon to see our students enjoy being outside and being active. Switching gears to talk a little bit about academics. Uh, you have a lot of different majors and minors, as well as programs uh, to choose from, and ultimately we really want to encourage you to uh, put together an experience that you are most interested in. So if you have two different interests or passions, you, you may find yourself double majoring or even adding on a minor or a certificate to your primary major, and it's certainly something that you're able to do here. We have seven distinct colleges, schools, and programs in which you can study in. They are all listed here. I certainly don't have time to go through all of them today, but there are extensive opportunities for you to learn more about these on our virtual visits website, which I will include at the end of my presentation. In addition to that, we also have our program and exploratory studies, which is an undecided option for our first year students to explore the different academic options that we have to offer. So if you find that you don't quite know what you want to major in, or maybe you know the career outcome, but you don't quite know how to get here, there, this will be the space for you when you're coming in as a first year student. You know, we uh, really encourage our students to find a good balance. So I think the classroom, you know, is super important, but we also want you to enjoy your life outside of that as well. And so housing and dining is kind of that first place where you have an opportunity to do that. Living in a residence hall is going to be kind of your first step at, at student life. And so we want you to be able to find a community that can both meet your academic goals, but help you thrive and, you know, kind of create that sense of balance, but also make it feel a little bit more like home. So there are three different housing options available to you in our residential hall communities. Our residential academic programs allow you to live with students in the same academic area as you and take classes within your residence hall. Living and learning communities are an opportunity for you to live with students that have a similar interest as you. So an example of this would be our undecided community or perhaps music or gaming. And then there's also a traditional option for you to live in a residence hall. 
with your peers um, and other first year students. But we really emphasize this holistic approach to that student wellness, and it does start in that residential hall experience. Um, in addition to that, in terms of dining services, there's a ton of options available to you, and I've never once heard a student complain about the food. Now, talking about um, you know getting out and exploring and enjoying Boulder, I mentioned some of these options already, but you can just see the extensive list of, of things that you can do to get involved. Eldora Mountains, 30 minutes away. It's a great option for you to go skiing. Chautauqua Park is home to um, hundreds of hiking trails that lead up into the Flatiron. Uh, we're a super bikeable campus, so that creek path is a cool option for you and also a great way for you to get around campus, and the list certainly goes on in that way. As I keep mentioning, you know, we really want you to find that balance and find a way for you to get involved in the things that you love. Um, there are plenty of study abroad programs available to you. About 25% of our population studies abroad. There are volunteer opportunities um, as well as research and the arts. So uh, quickly running through just some application information. Um, this is just a look at the application checklist or certainly, you know, potentially subject to change depending on what we see in this coming year. One thing I do want to point out is that SAT and ACT scores here listed as optional. Because we are a public state school, we are still waiting to hear whether or not we will be able to be test optional for the coming year. We're certainly hopeful and, and we feel that being test optional is um, you know, a good thing for our students, but we are still waiting to hear from our regions of Colorado. Um, but besides that, we do a holistic review process and are um, available on the common application. That's where you can apply. Here's our two freshman application deadlines. Uh, November 15th is going to be that early action deadline, providing you the opportunity to apply early and get your decision early. It is not a binding agreement in any way. And then January 15th is our regular decision deadline. I definitely encourage you to get all of your documents in by these dates because we do um, require you to have them submitted by the time we are reviewing your application. And then the last thing I'll mention is just our spring virtual visit opportunities. We have a lot available to you, and there is my timer, a lot available to you on the website. And like I said, I will link that in um, the chat at the end. So thanks so much. Thank you so much. Next up, we have Seattle University. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, let me go ahead and share my screen real quick. Perfect. Awesome. Hello, everyone. My name is Yo Bellman Gistu. I am an admissions counselor at Seattle University, um, and I work with all students who apply to Chicago. So if you apply, I'm the one who reads your application. Um, but yeah, we'll go ahead and get right into it. So Seattle University is the Jesuit school of Seattle, and I'm not going to go too much into the Jesuits because I know you all are very familiar with the Jesuits. Um, but I will kind of talk a little bit about who we are and kind of our location here. So Seattle University is located right in the heart of the city of Seattle. Uh, we are about a 15 minute walk away from the downtown area and we are in what's considered the Capitol Hill neighborhood. Um, our campus operates in a 54 acre campus. So in terms of walking from one end to the other, it would probably take you like eight to 10 minutes uh, and depending on how fast you walk for sure. Um, we have about 7,200 total students on our campus. Uh, we have about 4,700 undergraduate students. Uh, in terms of class sizes, you're looking at around 18 to 25 students per class. Um, every single class at Seattle University is taught by a, a professor, 100% faculty taught. So you'll be able to connect with your classmates as well as connecting with your professor to really create those uh, connections and relationships in terms of research opportunities, internships, as well as being able to get um, help on the material in the, in the courses. Um, again, we're right in the of the city, a private Catholic Jesuit institution, uh, about 15 minute walk away from the downtown area. As far as our academics at Seattle U, we have about 60 plus different degree programs. Uh, uh, some of the, the top majors you can see on the right hand side there. Um, we have nursing being one of our most popular uh, computer science, which is going to be housed in our new Center for Science and Innovation, which is going to be located in the heart of our campus. It's a brand new science building being completed in the fall uh, with students able to start taking courses in there. And there's like research, there's like research spaces, maker spaces, and a ton of different uh, lab spaces and so forth. Uh, we are a direct entry school, so when you apply to Seattle University, you will be able to get directly admitted into your first choice major, depending on if you've completed specific prerequisites uh, for certain uh, majors like sciences, uh, business, uh, engineering, and so forth. However, every single major is direct entry, so you have that option to get right into your major. And if you aren't directly admitted, you will have the opportunity to complete prereqs on campus and eventually declare the major. 
Another component I do want to talk about is our pre-major advising program. Pre-major is a great program on campus for students who are undecided and still kind of taking a little bit more time to kind of find what they're most interested in. The pre-major program is ideally set up for you to declare a major by the end of your second year. There's a team of five advisors who are really dedicated to helping you find what you're looking for. And then lastly, our core curriculum, which is really rooted in the Jesuit educational philosophy of discernment, reflection, and really being able to help students engage with multiple different subject areas on our campus and really be able to kind of think about like these core skills, like critical thinking skills, analytical reasoning skills, writing, and so forth. So that's a little quick snapshot of our academics at SU on the bottom right, of course top majors and direct entry programs, core, pre-major program. Um, student life at Seattle U is very robust. We have a ton of different programs on our campus where students are able to really connect with many different communities. We have about 100 plus different student clubs on our campus, ranging from like multicultural clubs to clubs rated around hobbies and so forth. Uh, we have our esports gaming club, which is a really cool club on campus that I do want to highlight. Uh, and and, and uh, we also have a circus club. So if you want to be a part of the circus, we have uh, we have a circus club, which is pretty cool. Um, but again, you can see some of these pictures, but our students are really involved on our campus. 94% of our students live on campus. First and second year students are required to live on our campus. So you'll be able to live in one of our residence halls with multiple different living options available to you. You can see student life is plentiful, a lot of different communities on our campus and ways to be able to find those communities you trust and communities that you want to connect with. Applying to Seattle University. So we have two deadlines for first year students. We have November 15th, which is going to come up. Uh, it's coming up very quickly. That is our early notification period. That will get you a decision around the end of December. We also have our regular decision deadline, which is January 15th. That will get you a decision around the first week of March. Our holistic review process plays a huge part in terms of how we review. We require, we're on the common application, so you would just apply on commonapp.org. We are also test optional, so you do not have to submit a test score if you do have if you have not taken the score uh, exam or if you don't want to submit those test scores. We require an official transcript from your high school, um, as well as two letters of recommendation: one from my school teacher and then one from a high school counselor. So as you can see, there's a ton of different things that we look closely at when we review students. However, we really want to look at the whole person, right? A, a huge hallmark of education, the Jesuit education, but ultimately being able to see how you fit into our campus community and also how are you able to succeed academically as well. Awesome. Now getting a little bit into financial aid and scholarships, Seattle University, uh, as you can see, we're a private institution, so the, the base tuition is the same for both in-state and out-of-state students. 91% of our first-year students receive uh, scholarships and financial aid at Seattle University. 97% of our student uh, of our first-year students receive financial aid. Um, in terms of scholarships and aid, we do offer merit awards, which are automatically considered for every single student that applies to Seattle University. Merit awards will range anywhere from 15000 to $25,000 for first year students and again internally reviewed and will be based on the holistic review aspect of our application. We have our Sullivan Leadership Award, which is a full tuition, full room and board scholarship available to students that is based off the core Jesuit educational philosophies. Feel free to go on our website and check that out and I'll also put it in the chat for you all as well. Uh, and then, of course, our average financial aid package at Seattle University is $32,000. So we try our best to kind of really create multiple different avenues for you to see Seattle University as a financial fit for both you and your families. Uh, and awesome. Yeah, that is kind of the end of what I have. Uh, if you have more questions, feel free to send me an email or you can call me uh, at my office number. But yeah, I'm excited to connect and hopefully work with you throughout your uh, admissions process in the next year. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. Next up, we have Colorado College. Cool. Just as, as soon as you start sharing your screen, everything gets all thrown around. So, all right, we're good to go. Hello, everybody. My name is Dylan Sanchez. I'm an assistant, direct, assistant director of admission here at Colorado College. Um, I'll briefly walk you through our campus today. And for those of you that have not, not had the chance to visit Colorado before, I'll start by saying that CC is located in the heart of Colorado Springs. Uh, so we're about 45 minutes to an hour south of Denver, the, the, uh, the state capital. Um, so you have access to much of the state from where we're located here in the Springs, but you don't really need to leave that often because Colorado Springs is the second largest city in all of the state. Um, campus, uh, campus itself is about five minutes or five, um, yeah, five minutes walking, five, 10 minutes walking of the downtown Colorado Springs area. So you'll often see our students kind of walking that way, heading towards local community shops and restaurants and things like that. 
Um, if usually if the Colorado weather is like nice enough, I mean, it was raining earlier and now it's like 75 degrees outside, but that's the beauty of Colorado. You're going to have all of your uh, winter changes and your summer changes, and you're going to be able to snowboard on the 4th of July every year. Um, that's, that's Colorado, but Moving on to um, the campus itself, um, CC is small. Um, we're a private institution. We offer 42 majors to roughly 2,300 students. So our classrooms are very, very small. Um, only about 20% of our students come from Colorado. So there's a very diverse um, body of students here on campus, which is something that I was, I was very excited to find out about uh, when I got here, uh, when I got to CC last November. Um, but classes are capped at 25 students, so it's, but it's rare to see classes come close to that. On average, our classes sit around 16 students, um, but working with a lot of the student ambassadors and learning as much as I can about CC, it's, I find it's very common to have classes in the single digits, um, which is, we'll talk about that a little bit more on the academic side and when you would, might see those different kinds of things. But um, that obviously what this means for relationships is that you're going to grow very closely with your peers and your professors, but that's not terribly uncommon at any institution you'll, you'll go to. Um, but what is unique to CC is going to be this block plan. Um, so CC is one of less than a dozen uh, less than a dozen colleges in, in the U.S. that works on a block plan model. So we take our courses one at a time. Um, so never again will you be doing um, an English paper while working on math homework and doing a chemistry project all on the same night. You'll focus on one subject area at a time for three and a half weeks. Um, that means you take your classes you still take four to five classes a semester, just as you would at a traditional semester, semester style schooling. Um, but it just with the black plan, you're going to focus on one subject area at a time, which allows you to dive into your work, get more hands on, which is something that CC just absolutely thrives in. But this also means our entire college is in class at the same time, right? If we're going to do it all the block plan, let's just all kind of do it all together. So you don't have to worry about setting up your schedules. All of our classes are hosted from 9 a.m. to noon, Monday through Friday. That means all 2,300 students are let out at noon. Um, so it's really cool. You never, uh, if anyone has that fear of missing out, you don't have to worry about that anymore. You're never going to miss a dodgeball tournament because you were in class or miss that art thing because, um, you know, you were in class or anything like that. Um, everybody works on the same schedule. So very cool. What that also means is that everyone is on break together. So after your three and a half weeks is done, everybody celebrates and you get four and a half days of freedom together called a block break. Um, we'll get back to block breaks here in a minute. But um, uh, oftentimes it's something that is, is very talked about with the block program is that our classroom is very concentrated, right? You'll be expected to learn a semester's curriculum in less than a month, but we do thrive in this environment. We've been doing this for 50 years um, as of 2020. So trust us, this is a tried and a proven formula in education. Some quick, quick statistics for any parents that are also listening in. Retention for freshman students is at 95%. 80% of our students will study abroad. 50% of our students will study abroad multiple times. Um, it's absolutely unprecedented. But 100% of our students perform a field study. This is something that I talked about briefly earlier. 100% um, of our students, like I said, will get out into the field, like to get very hands-on because this is our backyard. Um, Purple Mountain Majesty is written about Pikes Peak. It's written about, um, which is the backdrop to CC, um, which is just a great place for anybody interested in environmental sciences or any kind of earth sciences, geology, or even um, astronomy. We have houses, houses up in the uh, Carver Springs area that are located up in the mountains. Uh, beautiful places to go get out and go experience that. But that's kind of a just kind of a brief look at the academics. There's so much to talk about, even amongst 42 majors. But enough about the academics. I know I'm getting closer to time. But like I said, with the block breaks, um, our whole campus does everything together. We're a class together. We have fun together. At graduation, we have champagne showers together. It's something that's a tradition that's been going on for as long as uh, I've, I've for as long as I've, at least I've heard about it for at least uh, 10 years here because I lived in Colorado. It's a tradition where all the seniors get a bottle of champagne and think about LeBron James and the uh, uh, locker room after winning a championship, everybody just pops a bottle of champagne at graduation. So it's kind of a cool thing to do. But we have for trips to the Rocky Mountains, we have clubs and organizations, limitless, limitless resources to send you where to where you want to go. Whether you've been to Colorado or not, we look forward to having you here. Um, just so you know, for the application as a private college, we know it can be an intimidating process or just in general, the application process is intimidating. So I want to talk to you more specifically about what our application looks like in terms of um, essays and interviews and things like that. But we are, our application is available on the Cobbett application, the Coalition application, and then the QuestBridge application. Um, but yeah, that'll be it for me. I'll put my information in the chat as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. Next up, we have Whitman College. Awesome. Hello, everyone. Um, hi, my name is Madison Hollenbeck. Um, I'm an associate director of admission at Whitman. Um, I use she, her pronouns. Um, and 
I work with all of our students from the state of Illinois, so I appreciate you all being here. Um, when So a little bit about Whitman, we're a student body of about 1,500 students. We're a traditional liberal arts school. Um, our average class size is about 17, student professor ratio is nine to one. And we're located in Walla Walla, Washington, um, which is tucked down in that southeastern corner of Washington State. Um, this, we like to joke that Walla Walla is the only town so nice they named it twice. Um, but in thinking through how I kind of wanted to go about this presentation and talk to you all about Whitman um, and what makes Whitman unique in six minutes, um, I decided to kind of focus on three different programs that I think really encompass like the Whitman academic and just experience of being a part of our community. And so one of my favorite parts about Whitman College is the way that students show up for one another um, and work to create a collaborative community um, focused on social justice mindedness and um, engage in student led activism. And so a great example of that is our power and privilege symposium, which happens every spring. Um, it's a day where we host a complete student led program of workshops, um, of panels and presentations. And the goal of power and privilege is really to educate one another um, on the power structures prevailing around the world, um, question many of the paradigms and assumptions that we grew up with and challenge our community's understanding of their place in the world and based on these experiences and the power dynamics associated with it. Um, but it's a really incredible program to see students kind of take on all these challenging topics um, and the way that students engage in these conversations and how it goes past just the standing room um, in the presentation room, but you know, moves into your um, residence halls, into the dining halls, into the libraries and your classrooms for the rest of the year. Um, we have sessions ranging from environmental racism to anti-career language on campus, to body liberation and social justice, to first generation um, student experiences. And um, we're able to bring really incredible keynote speakers like Angela Davis, who you can see here on the slideshow to campus, um, which we had her um, in 2020 before um, COVID kind of shut everything down on campus. But, um, I really wanted to highlight this program because I think it really, like I said, encompasses and highlights um, how campus is and how we approach learning um, in a way of um, collaborative and discussion based and two um, shows how socially just minded our students are um, by cultivating sometimes difficult and even leading these difficult conversations by their own student initiation. The next um, program I really love to highlight is our Whitman Fellowship Program. At Whitman, you're not only a student at Whitman College, you're a citizen of Walla Walla. And I do think that's distinctive to going to school in a smaller rural community like Walla Walla, where we're a town of about 32,000 people. Um, our students are able to get off of campus in about a 10 minute walk into downtown Walla Walla and really make active, tangible differences that are lasting past their time on campus. Our community fellows actually spend the entire year working with prominent local organizations to address some of the area's social, economic and cultural challenges. Um, fellows are able to work with high level leaders um, in the Walla Walla Valley and receive mentoring and career guidance um, while making um, positive changes from the position as a student on Whitman's campus. In just the last year, you can see Jessica right here. Um, she was um, an intern that worked with the Walla Walla Department of Health and actually introduced healthy foods and healthy eating habits to rural schools within the Walla Walla Valley. Um, another student, um, Cameron Connor, um, you can see here, um, who worked hand in hand with the Walla Walla mayor to create a neighborhood engagement program um, where it focused on putting power and funding back into problems that neighborhoods identified um, and funding into those priorities. Um, and so even though these students graduated last year, these programs still exist. So even as they've left Whitman, they've also left their mark on Walla Walla and created lasting positive impacts on the town, um, which is pretty awesome to do as a current student. Um, lastly, I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about the sense of place of Whitman, um, of our location within Washington State, um, within the Pacific Northwest, and within the country. Um, we see over 260 days of sunshine a year, um, which is pretty different when you think about Pacific Northwest. Um, it's a lot drier where we're located. Um, but we sent out over, over 65 trips a school year to um, all around um, Walla Walla and um, Washington State from backpacking, river rafting, mountain biking, snowshoeing, um, rock climbing. Um, our local ski hill is about 45 minutes away from campus, and so you can learn how to ski and snowboard. Um, but we actually give students $150 to put towards these trips. So we're basically paying you to get outside and enjoy the beautiful Pacific Northwest, which I don't know how you can say no to, um, but I'm very biased. I recognize that. But we really do want our students to celebrate and engage with our beautiful valley, and we want it to be accessible to all students on campus. Um, and so kind of, I think as we're getting close to kind of 
the end of my time. Um, you, these are just like three examples of what makes Whitman stand out as a community um, that we're focused on collaboration, um, we're focused on engagement, and we're focused on exploration. Um, I'd love to get to know you all more um, as you kind of go through this process um, and start really thinking about the applications. And so my contact information is on the screen, um, but please let me know if there's anything I can ever help with um, as you go through this process. But thank you all um, for being here. Thank you so much. Next up, University of Oregon. Hello, everyone. Let me get my screen started here. So my name is Olivia Manwin. I'm a regional admissions counselor for the University of Oregon. I normally serve the Texas and Louisiana region, but I'm filling in for my wonderful colleague, Sarah, who is on maternity leave. So um, of course, we only have six minutes. I'll put my information in the chat. If you have questions at the end, you're welcome to hit me up and ask me more. Um, I'll tell you a little bit today about where we are located, some of the programs and things we have on our campus, and then just quickly get into our admissions process. So the University of Oregon is a public liberal arts research institution located in Eugene, Oregon. We're about two hours south of Portland and an hour from the Cascade Mountains and the coast respectively. So we don't get too cold in Eugene, but uh, if you find yourself missing the snow, then you can just drive an hour to the Cascade Mountains, of course, and if you're looking for something different, then you can head out to the coast. We have about a thousand, almost a thousand ducks from the Midwest attending the University of Oregon. Our campus is 295 acres, and we have over 5,000 trees repre representing over 500 species, so we're considered an arboretum, which is just a fancy way of saying a museum for trees. You can even download an app and take a tree tour of our campus. It does take about 15 minutes to walk from one end of campus to the other, or you can take a, the bus. We have a really strong public transportation system. And when you get your student ID, it actually doubles as a bus pass where you can take it all around town um, to the mall to get groceries. We have a line that goes from campus down to Target. And as a college student, what else do you need besides a grocery store and Target? Um, and as a, a student, I would take it to the other side of campus sometimes when I didn't want to walk. <laughs> We have uh, close to 19,000 undergraduate students. So we're very undergraduate heavy and we have close to 4,000 graduate students. We like to call ourselves a Goldilocks institution, meaning we are not too big, but not too small, just right. Um, we have a 16 to one student teacher ratio on our campus and a median class size of 20. And we have students from all over the world. So when you're taking classes with us, you're getting exposure and meeting people from everywhere. We are in the top 50 public institutions in the United States, and we're a tier one public research institution. We're also part of the AAU, which is the Association of American U Universities. We were only one of two uh, schools in the Northwest that are part of this. Um, being a research university matters because the work that we do creates major advances in areas such as health, medicine, national security, et cetera. So as an undergraduate student, you have the opportunity to get involved in tons of research. You don't have to wait till you're a graduate student or even an upperclassman. Getting into some of our most popular majors, we do have 168 academic programs on our campus that students can get involved in. And if you're not sure what you wanna do when you come in, that's absolutely okay. We call that exploring and a lot of our students come in exploring. Some of our most popular majors on campus are gonna be our Lundquist College of Business. Um, which is in the top 10 uh, top 10 percent of business schools worldwide. Our College of Arts and Sciences is has 60 percent of the population of our students in that major. Uh, biology, architecture, and sports management is a really popular one on our campus as well. We really encourage our students to get involved outside of the classroom in places like studying abroad. So we have over 300 programs to choose from. So whether you want to shadow a hospital in Ghana or an artist in Greece, we really have a program for anyone. We also have tons of clubs and organizations on our campus. Being a division one school, you have sports all year round to not just play, but to um, spectate. So we have football. Um, something I love about going to our football games is um, something we say during games is it never rains in Austin Stadium. Of course, it actually does rain, but our energy is so big that we can't feel it and you could not convince us otherwise. We do have a live on requirement for freshmen. Studies show that when students live on campus that they perform better. We have 10 different residential halls that students can choose from. And if you go to our website, housing.uoregon.edu, you can check out our different housing um, residential halls. And we do have some academic residential halls or community students can live in. So that is a great way to meet new people and find people that have shared passions and uh, 
in, uh, passion for inquiry. Here are a few of our top employers, and I'm sure that some of these names look familiar to you. We really want to set our students up for success, whether that's graduate school, law school, medical school, or as you get into your first career or your forever career. Getting into our application requirements, we um, our requirements are pretty straightforward. If you know that you're a student and maybe you are deficient in one of these areas, I would recommend, especially if you're a junior or lower, to work with a um, your high school counselor, but also um, set up a meeting with me and we can talk about alternative paths to admission. We take a holistic uh, review as well. So we're looking not just at your um, GPA, but the your grade trends, freshman to senior year, your coursework, and we are test optional and that is a permanent thing. So. Um, you do not have to send us your test scores, but if you want to, you can. Our early action deadline is non-binding and it's November 1st. You'll hear back by December uh, and our regular deadline is January 15th. We have introduced the Oregon Guarantee, which says that your tuition will be locked in at its price for five years, which is our commitment to help students financially plan for college and um, uh, our commitment to families to, to really just be able to know what you're going to be paying. We do have some scholarships for students as well, some merit-based ones, merit ones that automatically you qualify for just by applying. And your next steps are just taking um, our virtual tours. I put that link in the chat so you can see a little bit more about what we have to offer. And um, I'll put my contact information in there as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next up, Gonzaga University. All right. Hi, everybody. My name is Zusel Aguilar, and I'm a senior admission counselor here at Gonzaga. And I oversee all of our students from the state of Illinois. So I'll be your admission counselor. My contact information is at the first um, slide as well as the last one. Um, so I'll go ahead and get started and just give you some general overview. Like my colleagues um, over in Seattle, we are also a Jesuit institution. So we're located on the opposite side of the state. Um, in Spokane, Washington. So we're on uh, complete different sides. And we have about 5,200 to 5,300 undergraduate students. So a smaller um, medium-sized university. Most of our students are coming from over 200 miles away. So it's about 55% out of state. And then it's about 45% uh, in state. So students are coming from all over the country, um, a lot from Western states, but a good amount from the upper Midwest um, states as well. So on average, your average class size is gonna be uh, 22. Your student to faculty ratio is gonna be 11 to one. Retention rate is how many first year students return to second year. So generally that can show expectations being met, resources being offered. Typically we're about a 94, 95%, but this is updated in light of COVID. In terms of our academic programs, we have five different schools and I've highlighted some key programs within each school as well as pre-professional pathways that you can add to any major and you'll get an advisor for your um, specific degree as well as the pre-professional program to assist you. Nursing and engineering are direct admission uh, and then they will require you to apply directly to those programs. You can always leave them if you uh, find that you don't like them, you just can't switch into them later on. In terms of life on campus, we're very seasonally distinct. So lots of great opportunities for the outdoors. And I'll talk about that a little later on. A very active student life, lots of engagement. Um, we have over 140 different clubs, over 20 different yearly retreats, lots of opportunities for community service. We do about 150,000 community service hours per year. Let's go to the next one. Um, athletics is also another way where you can get involved. Um, there are intramurals, club sports, as well as D1 athletics. Um, all tickets are free for D1 athletics. Club sports, you have to try out for. Um, and then intramurals are just open to Gonzaga University students. And there's three different levels of competitiveness and it's championship bracket style. And they're very popular on campus. A study abroad is also a huge part of the university. Over half of our students will do a study abroad program um, during their time at Gonzaga. Gonzaga Influence is one of our most popular options, but we have programs on every continent except for Antarctica. So lots of opportunities if you're interested in a specific one for your academic program, or you're just interested in going to a specific location. 
In terms of Spokane, um, like I mentioned, we are on the opposite side of the state, very close to the border of Idaho, about 20 minutes away, very big on the outdoors, really, you can go 15, 20 minutes in any direction and hit some kind of state park. Um, we're the second largest city in the state of Washington, Seattle is the largest, um, so we are a smaller city, it's about 250,000, about 700,000 in the metropolitan area. Really cool access to the outdoors, to skiing and snowboarding. We have about five local mountains um, that are within, you know, like an hour and a half to, um, the closest one is about 45 minutes. The most popular one is about an hour and a half, um, but all really within about three hours of campus. And we have shuttles that are there that will take you there um, every weekend that the parks are open. We have rentals um, and all of that available discounts, especially if you're coming from further away and don't know if you can bring your gear, we have gear for you to rent. In terms of admission, you apply through the Common App. That is where our application will be. The deadline is December 1st. We have a one application deadline. We don't have early action or early decision. Everybody finds out at the same time. Um, and then everyone gets you know, the same priority. Like I mentioned, nursing and engineer are direct admission. We just look a little bit more closely at your math and science grades and um, curriculum. Here are uh, middle 50% incoming class averages. And then we are indefinitely test optional and that's test optional for every academic program and you still get considered for merit scholarships so that doesn't impact anything. We do take a look at demonstrated interest. So attending events like this is considered demonstrated interest as well as admission interviews, which can be really helpful to provide context. And I always like for it to be an opportunity for um, us to get ahead of any questions that you might have in the application process or for to give advice or um, for you to ask questions and for us to ask questions as well. In terms of financial aid, need base is decided by FAFSA, which you should fill out by December 1st. There are application-based scholarships. There are some specific to a major, as well as um, some specific to like leadership or honors. Our average financial aid package is about 33,000 a year. And then most students are receiving financial aid and or merit scholarships. Merit scholarships are reviewed holistically. So um, a good percentage of our students receive merit scholarships. But if you do have any questions, my contact information is on there and then feel free to send any questions in the Q&A. Thank you so much. So now we have some time for questions. Um, I ask that all of our presenters join me back on camera. We're gonna start back with University of Colorado Boulder. And the first question for our folks today, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? So Heather, over to you. You're muted, Heather. Heather, you're muted. <laughs> or your sound is not working. Um, so we'll let you work on that. Let's go to Seattle University. Uh, yeah, for sure. Thank you. Uh, advice I would give for someone going through the college search process is definitely make sure you go, you kind of uh, make a list of the different schools you want to apply to or like are interested in kind of learning more about. Go to their website and just kind of do a really deep dive, uh, whether it be like thinking about like programs or academic programs you're thinking of, um, campus visits, um, looking at being able to connect with the different student life opportunities and residence halls. Uh, a lot of campus, uh, a lot of universities' websites are really robust, uh, and that's kind of the biggest thing I think. Um, being able to kind of get a lot of those different things you're looking for through the websites, through those deep dives, and then being able to follow up via questions to like admissions counselors is probably like the best first step. And I think that's, uh, yeah. Colorado College. Uh, yeah, I mean, I would, aside from that, I'd say, um, I think the most important thing, the thing that I, I, I wish I'd done or when I, if I could relive it all again, was just really have fun with this process. Um, it really is an exciting time. I know it's stressful or it's just like buying a car. It's just like buying a house, right? There's so many variables into every, into every single institution you're looking towards. But just remember to have fun with it, kind of stop and reflect and remember that you're going to spend some time here at this at the place that you choose and it's going to be a place that you're looking forward to and you're going to make the most of it no matter what. Whitman College. Yeah, um, I my piece of advice be be willing to try something new. Um, you know, you can always move back home after college or um, stick close to home in the future, but um, college is a really exciting opportunity to get outside your comfort zone and push yourself a little bit um, to get into a new environment, to maybe move across the country, to um, just try something new. Um, and so uh, don't just 
I think uh, cut out colleges early on that might be a really good fit, but it seemed too far away. You never quite know until you um, are really kind of diving in, you know, past your applying and everything like that. And so keep an open mind. University of Oregon. Um, yeah, I think also you should take advantage of this virtual world. Before, you know, all this happened, it was a lot harder if you weren't able to visit campus and some websites didn't have a lot of virtual resources. And now almost every website does. So take advantage of that. Um, talk with your admissions council. That's what we're here for. And also talk with current students. If you want to see what the experience is now, a lot of colleges offer um, meetings that you can set up with ambassadors or current students and see how they feel on campus. So, yeah. Gonzaga University. So on campus, I oversee our undergraduate scholarships and strong applicants rise quickly in the pool. And I often talk to students who, you know, didn't apply because they were really nervous and they didn't know. And um, I meet with the student and I learn their involvements and they, they're a strong, strong student that would have probably gotten, you know, been a good candidate for that scholarship. So please take a look at what each of these school scholarship requirements are, um, see if you fit those and apply for them and look at their scholarship deadlines, just look into a, a little bit more on that process. It will serve you best in the end um, to try like every avenue for additional aid. Let's go back to University of Colorado Boulder. No, unfortunately, it's not working, Heather. I'll tell you. Um, let's go to the um, the next question. Um, let me show that one to you. Here we go. What is your favorite event or tradition on campus? And we'll start with Seattle University. Uh, for sure, yeah. Our my favorite event um, or tradition on campus is what we call quad stock. It's like a, uh, like a big music festival in the middle of our quad on, on like a Saturday in the middle of May. Uh, and so there's like super cool artists that we bring out. Uh, we've had Macklemore there we've had Talib Kweli, um, and we've just had like a, a lot of cool artists, like local Seattle artists too. Um, and, uh, it's a really cool time. There's like, there's like music, there's like big music festival. There's like different kind of like, there's like food. It's almost like a carnival atmosphere. Uh, and it's it's a really awesome time and it's it's in May so it's a really cool event. Colorado College. Yeah I kind of I kind of mentioned mine uh, in my presentation about champagne showers but ours is actually the one I'm thinking of is very similar to similar to Seattle University we call it uh, Lama Palooza it's a big music festival that we have but the the difference is for us is that we um, everybody takes their bikes out and you just take whatever the most ridiculous thing you can wear and you ride your bike down uh, to the downtown Springs area and our, uh, the concerts held down there um, in previous years that I'd, I'd heard of Maroon 5 and Mac Miller, Macklemore as well. So he's a pretty popular guy, I guess. But um, yeah, some pretty cool stuff at, at Lama Palooza. Whitman College. Yeah, um, Whitman um, kind of unofficial mascot is a duck, um, different than University of Ducks, but we have like five, so many like ducks that live on our campus, um, as well as, I mean, right now, a ton of baby ducklings, but every spring, someone on campus hi hides like 500 rubber ducks across campus, um, and it's just kind of a fun, quirky tradition. They send out an email like the morning of when they hide them and they hide them at like 5 a.m. in the morning and um, you'll see Whitman students like climbing into bushes and trees and like trying to find all these rubber ducks. The more ducks you get, the more prizes you get um, at the end of it. But it's just something that's fun, quirky and kind of lightheartedness in the middle of spring semester as you're getting close to finals. And so um, it's actually happening on campus right now, um, which is kind of fun. And so that's uh, one of my favorite traditions. University of Oregon. One of my favorite traditions is um, just during football season, walking over to Austin Stadium. We have this really cool bridge that connects campus. Um, and it's just like a kind of like walking through a forest. There's a lot of beautiful scenery, but it's just a lot of students do it at the same time. So walking over that bridge together, sometimes the Oregon Duck is there and you just feel that energy as we march on over to Austin Stadium for the game. So that's just definitely one of my favorite traditions is making that walk. Gonzaga University. So every Wednesday evening, we have an event called Cookie Night, where our um, sandwich shop bakes like 2,000 cookies at like 10 p.m., and it just smells like all on campus of just fresh baked cookies, and you line up, and the line is long. Um, it's a great deal, too. It's, it's really cheap, um, and you just like meet with other students. You just go through the line talking with your friends. It's just, just a really good study break. Uh, especially just seeing people um, come out of the library and just having some time for some community before you head back to study. Amazing. Well, I want to thank our uh, wonderful presenters today. 
Um, it is a very busy week in college admissions with the May 1 de decision deadline coming up. So all of our folks here are uh, hard at work. So thank you so much for your time and your presentations. Um, and thank you for tuning in and for joining us. When you close this window, there will be a link to a fair, very quick four question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. Also, this is just one of any sessions being hosted. There's still more to sign up for at strivescan.com. Remember that you can ask your St. Ignatius counselors questions about the college search in the counselor corner on the same website. And in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all others um, available at strivescan.com backslash Ignatius. Have a great rest of the day. Thank you.